<sighs> well, when, when Omar tries to answer, he's got so much cooseberry juice in his mouth, it's, it's foaming off the corners of his lips. He has a gargle, <coughs> gargle that up. And he says, yes, uh, I was born in bulk. But now, I must search north of the Oxus for the patronage of a sultan, non-violent sultan. You know how hard this is going to be to find a, one of those peaceful ones? Uh, well, look, the Uzbeks, they've heard enough. They pull him up out of the dust cush, mesh, mush, mess. They gag him. They hood him. <laughs> you Islamic people like to hood people. <laughs> they can't see anything. He, and tie his hands behind his back and just yeah, push him into this zack. Next to the chick. Naked chick. Yeah. Well, a little scenery goes a long way. Oxus isn't that cute. Uh, yeah. They quiver with excitement. Oh, great blessing, because they realize this Malangazado, a mendicant, uh, rebel, drava, well, he's worth his weight in gold. And so it came to pass. 1888. Hundred years ago, uh, that uh, yeah, Omar was kidnapped, secretly transported by two Uzbeki bandits, three, and the, the concubine. Two hundred and fifty kilometers. This took two weeks, huh, to get their hostage up to the Sultan Khan, the Toothless the Third of Samarkand. All right, picture this scene. They're all in the royal throne room. <laughs> there's the toothless. There's the bandits. There's Omar uh, 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 seeking uh, uh, protection from the sultan. Uh, and he is the prophet of uh, preservation. Okay. He, he uh, uh, the toothless, he... he uh, uh, Grand Vizier, uh, bring bring over um, 70 kilograms of gold coins with my picture stamped on the front of it and an uptight eagles on the back. <laughs> Pay him off. His weight in gold. I've got the Messiah of Hashish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my enemies, they're going to have to yeah, do the snake and kiss my ring. Huh? So, uh, yeah, deal went down. Everybody's happy, including Omar. Uh, so, um, and, oh, Khan the Tooth is third. He, he never tires of flaunting his, uh, his discovered by him, he says. Messiah, oh, to his amazed subjects in... Uh, well, look, let's talk about imprinting. You know, chicken hatches from the egg. If you're standing next to it, it's going to follow you around forever. A goose? I mean, it'll even follow you in your car. Fly next to you in your car, this kind of thing. Well, Omer got imprinted, all right. Bam! Oh. Uh, at the very moment of his enlightenment, what was the surrounding uh-huh-huh? Associated associations, uh -huh. red cooseberry juice, yeah, sloppy red, yeah, organic, and, you know, dust bowl mania, oh, so, uh, he felt that his uh, samadhi attacks, or, or enlightenment attacks, yeah, coming on, um, yeah, He'd, he'd, he'd grab the, the kush berries, mesh them up, mush them up, dive in the dirt. Get down and dusty. Well, well, there's not always red kush berry uh, bushes around. 
So, ooh, uh, yeah, he's suffering from a spontaneous enlightenment attack. He would, ah, uh, oh, bite his own forearm and then suck up the blood in it and then spew it all over himself as a substitute for the red crucifixion bushes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, needless to mention, this always attracted a crowd. I mean, the curious uh, Uzbeki peasants, huh? Not much else to do up there. Bored, yeah. Um, well, this was how Omar, the Balkistani Malung Yogi Zadu, became known as the Dust Master. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, did Dusty really know the secret of year-round hashish preservation? I mean, come on. Let's let's come clean on this, okay? Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, he was born into that uh, particular family within the clan. These are kind of like shamans. Pass on the supernatural stuff to... The young ones, his brother, and he knew the secret. It was passed on by the paternal uncle to the nephew. You either, uh, well, better than circumcision. Uh, yeah, rite of passage. Yeah. Um, so for centuries, the Turkoman, Uzbeks, Kizgiris, uh, uh, Azerbaijanis, uh, Uzbekis, uh, warriors, uh, and and the other Afghani tribes, they didn't know either. This we're talking we're especially about only the bulk clan. Um, they always made the same mistakes. They're trying to figure out the secret on their own, huh? You know, trying to spy, get secret technology. You know, without the permission of the inventor. I mean, they were close to China. Uh, they made the same mistake. Yeah. That the cult secret of hash preservation was involved in the manner of pressing the marijuana into hashish. Pressing. it Somehow the way they pressed it, they compacted that marijuana pollen. Wrong. <laughs> I mean, oh, so wrong. But the, the crafty slave Omar, I mean, he's ever faithful to his Balkistani clan people. Uh, yeah. He just let him go on, yeah, imagining that was it. And uh, he never corrected the error in their basic assumption. Instead, he performed, oh, yeah, his duties for the con. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, dutifully, uh, by, well, he talked the Khan into, into creating his own private hashish uh, laboratory. Uh, and uh, a harem, you know, private harem, uh, um, as an, yeah, he, and he just pressed, he hand pressed, he gave the Khan the good stuff, and it never molded through the winter uh, as an ingenious cover. It was a red herring, like out of the Oral Sea. Uh, used to have water in it. Uh, to protect the ancient secret. Well, ooh, passing of time. Performance artist uh, symbol. And, uh, oh. Uh, ten years went by. <sighs> well, that saved a lot of performing, didn't it? 1888? 1899? Yeah. Warlord of Samarkand. The Toothless. He enjoyed a monopoly. He's the only one. North of the Oxus uh, to be personally graced by the world's most primo hashish. Hello? Hey. Oh, 
years. Long, old. Hand pressed by Omar, the dustmaster himself. Oh, con, huh? He's getting his money's worth out of those uh, 70 kilos of gold coins.